Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to Kingfish Simple. So in today's video, I'm gonna be doing the first part of my angelfish breeding series. And today we are gonna be talking about how to get the eggs off your angelfish and how to breed them. This is gonna be, I don't know how many parts series this is gonna be. I'm pretty much gonna create a whole bunch of videos showing you the, the whole entire process of me breeding my angelfish up to getting the fry and getting the fry to a decent size. So make sure you stay around to the end of this video and I'm gonna make a whole playlist. So this is gonna be the first episode but today we're gonna to be talking about the angelfish laying the eggs and then the next video will be raising the eggs yourself. So I like to, when I breed angelfish, I like to raise the eggs myself. You can leave the eggs in there, um, but sometimes it's just a bit messy and they'll eat their eggs and uh, it also means that you can hatch more eggs because they breed more often and yeah, there's a lot of benefits to it, but there's also a lot of cons because the angelfish don't really get raised the natural way, but anyways. So the reason I decided to make this video is because I've bred my angelfish a bunch of times and today they have started doing the breeding behavior that I can show you. So I thought I might as well just take you along for the journey and yeah, let's have a look. So this is my angelfish aquarium in here. I have six koi angelfish, which I raised up from little juveniles and now they've started to breed. So basically for these guys to breed, you probably need for a pair, you need about a 20 gallon aquarium. They like taller aquariums rather than like sh shorter aquariums. And that is pretty much all you need. You need a heater, obviously. You need a filter and all that kind of stuff. Um, but these are a medium kind of difficulty to breed. They're pretty easy to breed once you get them going, but it's harder to kind of get a pair. So the way these guys breed is they actually pair for life. So what they'll do is a male and a female will decide to pair off. A male will get a female and they'll actually pair for life. And what they do is they breed every two weeks and that's how they breed. So like, unlike other fish like live bears where they just kind of breed with anyone, these guys do pair for life and you can see that they are protect. This is a pair here and they're over this side of the aquarium and they're protecting this side from the other guys. So the best way to get a pair is you can either buy a pair of another breeder, which can sometimes be a bit risky because you don't know that the, f the fish have bred a bunch of times. But another way and the best way to do it is to actually raise up six or eight angelfish from juveniles and let them pair off themselves. So I know that can be a bit annoying. I, to, I bought these guys last year, about a year ago now. And yeah, they've decided to pair off only about two months ago. So it's a long process. So if you guys are willing to pay a little bit more, you can get a pair yourself. Um, but it's much cheaper just to buy a bunch of juveniles. And then as well, normally when you buy a bunch of juveniles, you can actually sell the juveniles to, the, like, to other people. I mean, not the juveniles, you can sell the pairs that you get because you'll probably get more than one pair. You can just keep one pair and you can sell the pairs for quite a bit of money. So anyways, to, after these, you've raised these guys up and you've got your first pair, there's really not a lot to do. These guys will pretty much breed on their own. The best way to get them to start to breed is to condition them properly. So what I mean by conditioning is, I mean by feeding the correct foods and doing the correct, like setting the correct environments for them to develop, for her to develop eggs, this female over here, and this male to get in the mood as well. So the way you se sex these guys is, it's super hard. Um, I've made a video on this, and you guys can check it out if you want a bit more detail, but you kind of don't know what gender they are until they breed. But over here, you can see this is a male by this little uh, tube here. That's his breeding tube. And then the female is, has a fatter breeding tube. But the males normally have bigger heads than the females and the males are normally a little bit bigger than the females. As you can see here, she is quite a bit smaller than him, but she's also quite a bit fatter. So she's full of eggs. But the way we condition them is we feed them live foods or we feed them like blood worms and all that kind of stuff. You want to feed them high protein foods and more natural foods. You want to feed them more regularly as well. And this will get them in the mood. So feeding things like flakes, you can sometimes get away with, but you're definitely not going to condition them the way you would if you had some blood worms in the aquarium and all that kind of good stuff because these guys uh, just love to breed on that. So what's gonna happen is after they've been conditioned, they're gonna start coming over here and they're gonna pick a spot where they're gonna breed. So as you can see here, these two have decided that they're gonna breed on this leaf, I'm guessing. And what they'll do is they'll actually pick, they'll protect, they'll protect the area like they are now. But I'm gonna try and get a bit of footage of them actually picking at the leaf because what they do is they clean the surface before they lay the eggs. So they like to prep the surface to make sure there's no bacteria there and this can take up to a couple of days and they'll get ready to breed and I'm going to guess that these guys are probably going to breed this afternoon because her tube has come out quite a lot and that's a good sign that they're ready to breed and so has his because 
you can see here these guys do have the same tubes but they're definitely not as profound as these guys tubes so here we go you can see here they're just picking out this leaf and they're getting ready to lay their eggs so i'm going to guess that they're going to lay a sarvo i'm not too sure they look like they're picking out a few so i don't know if they're going to lay on a bunch of them which would be pretty annoying but I'll catch up with you guys when these start to breed. I'm going to hopefully get a bit of footage of them breeding, but if not, you'll see the eggs and I'll show you what I do after I get the eggs. Okay, so it has now been uh, like a couple of hours. It's nighttime now and the angelfish are bred. So I'm going to show you now the eggs and all that. I didn't really get any footage of them breeding because they bred while I was out, but I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do to hatch these guys yourself. So you're just going to need a jar and I'll like use a bit of... Um, methane blue to keep the uh, eggs from getting fungus on them so I'll show you that now. So here's the angelfish and there's their eggs so you can see they're all over there and he's protecting them and he's going up and fanning the eggs to make sure that they don't get algae on them. Now normally they'll take care of the eggs for like until they're free swimming and then they'll take care of the fry themselves but because this is a community aquarium the chances of, of this fry surviving of them not um, like or them eating it are a lot higher so like the fry are more likely not to survive so it's better that I take them out because I can't really let them take care of their own babies. So what I'm going to do is obviously get a jar and we're going to put them in there. So I've taken the eggs out and I put them in this jar with just the aquarium water. And as you can see, they're all just in there. Now I've seen a lot of people, they put um, an air pump in there to try and like stimulate the water movement to stop fungus getting on there. Now I've done this a bunch of times and it's really not necessary. I've done it before and it didn't really work as well. And it kind of um, wasn't that great, but what we can use to get a few more fry is some methylene blue. So this stuff you can just get from your local fish store. It comes in stuff like Multicure and that. And you just want to add like literally, I just add a couple of drops. And that's enough because that'll just stop the fungus from growing on the eggs and we'll get a few more angelfish. So now I'm going to leave this and I'm going to record it over the next couple of days to show you guys what's going to happen. And uh, yeah, that'll be the end of this episode. So if you guys want to go and click on the next episode, Feel free to do that because you'll see me raise these guys up to free swimming and then I'll show you guys after that how to care for the fry up to a decent size because that can be a little bit confusing. So thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.